I finally finished playing Final Fantasy VII Remake, and I must say, I'm impressed. I have so many fond memories of playing the original when I was a kid, and had always imagined what a remake would be like, and I can safely say this game delivered on most of those expectations. Without spoiling anything, there are a few changes that I know most fans of the original game aren't going to be happy about, but I'm going to embrace most of these changes with open arms. Except for one. Let me start by saying, before I even began playing the remake, I knew I'd want to make a review for it, so I kept a notepad next to me through my whole playthrough. I didn't rush through the game just to get a review out so I could get a bunch of views while the game is still hot. I love this franchise far too much to milk a profit from its popularity. Let's hope Square does too? Anyway, while writing notes for my review, I began to notice something strange about this game. And no, I'm not talking about the weird in-game model's mouths. Before we open up tonight, it'll be a while yet, so what do you want to do? I'm not talking about the fact that Cloud never takes his armor off when he goes to bed. I'm not even talking about the weird glitches I encountered while playing. Be cowed by threats or violence. To the people of Midgar, I make this vow. We will find the villains responsible and bring them to justice. Are you listening, Avalanche? You cowardly dogs! No, there was one recurring pattern that kept taking up all the space in my notes. The girls always need help. I find this particularly off because they each have a moment where they say something along the lines of You worry too much. I'm not some princess who needs to be coddled. But soon after they're falling again. And again. And again... And again... And again... Now look, I'm not saying you can't have characters make mistakes or have flaws. After all, Tifa would not be the same without her insecurities, and Aerith would not be the same without her stubbornness. But what I am saying is, it's a little weird to hear Tifa say this... I'll be fine. You've seen how much ass I can kick? Then later have a scene like this... Cloud! Tifa! <sighs> Or having Aerith say this... I need to get into that audition, but I won't let anyone else fight my battles for me. That includes you, mister. When she said this earlier... Just do this for me, okay? <sighs> Fine, but it'll cost you. Even Jesse gets in on it. It hurt? Wish I could say it didn't, but yeah. <laughs> God, this is so embarrassing. I hate playing the damsel in distress. It happens. Boy, does it. Listen, I'm no expert on feminism or virtue signaling or anything like that. I do wonder, though, if this was Square's attempt at being progressive, giving their female characters quips and dialogue addressing how strong and independent they are. If that's the case, then I think Square kind of missed the point. Tifa's not a strong female character because she can fight. Her physical strength isn't what makes her a strong character. It's her personality, her thoughts, and her actions that make her a strong female character. Look at this scene, for example. <sighs> T 
Tifa is nervous that she has to talk to Cloud. So before she does it, she takes a drink and sits down, but not directly beside him. She keeps a bit of space between them because they aren't as close as they once were. It may seem small, but that little detail shows a lot more character than having her say that she has character. Again, I'm not saying you can't have characters fail. In fact, earlier I showed a scene where one of the girls falling actually works as a demonstration of who they are. Be careful. Okay. <sighs> Easy now. You worry too much. I'm not some princess who needs to be coddled. Unexpected. Thank you, Cloud. Right away, we know Aerith is adventurous, probably to the point of being in over her head. We also see that she can be a little overconfident in her own abilities. That's character. They wrote this scene, so they obviously know how to do the characters right. So why are there so many scenes of them doing it wrong? And more importantly, why do the guys never have these same issues? Sure, Barrett falls at one point and Cloud does a few times too, prompting the girls to save them, but that's the thing, it only happens sporadically. You'd be hard pressed to remember it happening at all. Cloud and Barrett don't need to say how cool and strong they are. They just are. And I think that instead of trying to write a strong female character, they should first focus on writing a strong character that happens to be female. Their gender shouldn't be what defines them, their character should be what defines them. I love Final Fantasy VII, and I really, really like Final Fantasy VII Remake. I do. In fact, my favorite thing about it is how they fixed Aerith and Tifa's personalities. Man, the compilation really ruined them. Heck, even Cloud's personality is better now than what it became in the compilation. Minor spoilers ahead, I'm gonna geek out a bit. I like how when ghosts appear in chapter whatever, Tifa hides behind Aerith. I feel like if this were the compilation, they would have made the mistake of doing it the other way around. But no, Tifa would be more startled than Aerith would. I like the dance minigame at the Honey Bee Inn. I never thought I'd see my boy Cloud hit the dance floor like that, nuh uh. Did you learn those moves in Soldier Cloud? Dang! I like Aerith's reaction in this scene. We have the perfect room for a sweet looking couple like you. How much? Cloud. I wish Aerith hit people with her staff though. I get why they changed her combat, but come on, she grew up in the slums. I always imagined her first staff just being some piece of metal she picked up somewhere. I like how instinctively nervous this fight made me. And I <laughs> hate this. This isn't the video I planned on making when I was writing for my review. Who knows, maybe one day I'll actually do a proper review, or even a comparison video, or a character analysis video, you know how much I love doing those. But until then, I'll leave you with this.